All right. Welcome to Connected Inc. And hello again to another session. Uh, this time we are going to join the Global Canvas uh, and an Art Jam session with Sunday Sketching Collective. Sunday Sketching Collective is Irina, uh, Vera, Simone, Jennifer, and Olga, also known as Azurox. Uh, Magma Studio is a software which is browser-based, uh, and it allows collaborative drawing with, I think, up to 30 people um, at the same time. So Sunday Sketching Collective is basically inviting you to a chat and some creative inspiration and some insights on what they do and what keeps them busy while they're drawing away on Magma Studio. So enjoy and uh, see you later. And I'm handing over to you. All right. Hello. Oh. Hello. <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> Awkward silence. <laughs> <Hopefully>. <laughs> Should so. I present what we're going to do or so when, when somebody else, you know? No, you're the new girl. You're doing it. Yeah. I, uh, I, 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 oh, okay. Sure. <laughs> Hi, I'm Vera. I'm the new girl, apparently. <laughs> I joined for the first time. These others all have already done the live streams and um, what we're going to do today together, we had our Instagram followers um, prompt us some certain like aspects for a character. So each one of us asked our followers for, for different uh, aspects. And we collected a bunch of amazing um, suggestions from you guys. So um, thank you for that. And we picked the most amazing ones and made a super random weird character that each one of us will draw their own rendition of today. Yay. Yay. So what were the aspects we picked? I only get like two together. <laughs> okay, let me let already. me check. I hope my notes are <laughs> yeah. one after each other. So I asked my followers what the character's job or uh, calling is. And my favorite idea was Viking accountant. But because it's very complicated, we are now a little bit yeah, being a little bit optional, but it can be a Viking or an accountant or both with like a hard <laughs> mode. So, who's next? I, I asked can my don't. followers. Oh. <laughs> I asked my followers what kind of a pet or a companion our character should have, and um, I chose the rubber rhino Randy. <laughs> okay. Okay, I can go next. So my, my followers were asked for hobbies and special interests of the character. And the favorite answer I got was moss. So it's special interest is That's moss. a great answer. <laughs> I think so too. It's yes. amazing. <laughs> I asked for traits, um, especially character traits. My favorite one was not a character tra trait. It was cannelloni scrunchy, but um, I <laughs> selected a character trait and this was curious. <laughs> Okay, and I asked my followers, lots of great uh, answers were given. I asked what the character's greatest weakness was. And yes, from the standard arachnophobia to um, scared of not having enough backstory, um, I chose um, <laughs> the fear of ducks because I kind of feel the ducks are a cute thing to be scared of. <laughs> Perfect. Cool. So yeah, I guess we'll jump in and so, so we draw have this a, person. a Viking, Viking or and or accountant that is afraid of ducks. Has <laughs> has a as a hobby moss. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, and, and ha his companion is Randy the rubber rhino. Yeah. Yes. This, this sounds like a great character action. And yeah. you know what? Mm -hmm. My pressure sensitivity. Nothing works. I feel like I tried oh, it, no. and now it doesn't work. It's, I'm no. like completely did you, did a lag. I did try putting on magma and everything again, but are you using Microsoft Edge? Because I feel it works better with Edge. Oh, what? Mm -hmm. Something no. works better with Edge? Okay, <laughs> that's what's the price too. See you in a minute. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> but I'm still there, but you can hear me, but I'm just changing my browser. Um, where is edge yeah also just for your information my my like at every two minutes or so i can't hear you for like 10 seconds <laughs> me so if i don't add all of you like everything awesome. freezes up so best best uh yeah 
starting position yes, for good, us here. Good. This will work. Sure. We have the time. Fine. Everything's good. <laughs> Like every time I do any live streams, I've been warned about like not to prepare too much to avoid too much perfection because people don't like that. So we are not having none of that. We don't have yeah. to fear. <laughs> you don't have to perfection. fear perfection for us. Uh, yeah. No, <laughs> perfection is intimidating. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now I'm called Smurf. <laughs> Smurf oh, yeah. is a good name. I like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to leave myself as Schmur. Yeah, user setting is now. Okay. Ha. So we are all drawing our own version of this character, right? Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. So it can be any age, any gender, um, any. It could also be like an anthropomorphic character, right? Because Vikings yeah. don't have to be human, I guess. Nope. Everybody can be a Viking. It doesn't work. I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's a new challenge for you, Shmo. <laughs> yes, I, you know what? I'm just going to draw with a lag and with no pressure sensitivity. Fine with me. It's like, it's like drawing with uh, a piece of soap, but maybe you can yep. use soap. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, guys, just like if, you, if you need a challenge, you know, uh, get inspired by Shmo. Just turn off the pressure sensitivity and go for it. I think I'm actually drawing a Viking kid because the rubber rhino and the moss, like moss collection thing, just reminds <laughs> me of something a kid would maybe do. And <laughs> <laughs> I like that idea. But you know, I think the rubber rhino is like a real, a real character. <laughs> maybe it's alive. May I don't know. Maybe I'm not sure yet. Maybe it will be. Will there be ducks in your in your drawing? So I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe, I'm still thinking maybe. how to include the ducks and everything. It's really hard to include <laughs> all of the qualities into one character. But that's the challenge. Yeah, yeah. I like it. We chose our our life ourselves. <laughs> we can't complain anymore. <laughs> oh, I have to. Oh man. Like we, we said we could do a Viking that is not an accountant, right? If we want. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, I kind of like the accountant though. It's kind of, it's a weird, like the combination. Kudos to yeah. whoever came up with that. It's like, uh, you want to know who came up it. with that? It was I do. who came up with that. It was her. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's amazing. <laughs> Good job. Shout out to his food. Yes. <laughs> oh man, that's cool. I love that. <laughs> Always a great idea to ask followers. They are much more creative than you can ever be. I feel. Yeah. <laughs> I've got so many great I like answers. I can't yes, me think too. Of them. I want to kind of want to like draw all of it now. Like so many cool ideas in there. I also had danger noodle a lot, like you know, snakes. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, people. <laughs> but I heard that danger noodle can also be like a, a, a weasel or something. Oh, like, so I think somebody on uh, some YouTuber who had pet parrots called them danger noodles as well. <laughs> so they're also long and blinky. Yeah, makes sense. But are they dangerous? Apparently. I mean, they are predators, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, so they I'm are so unhappy. They are with like this. less dangerous to uh, to us, but they are. I think that's what the people came for. You know, the, the question, the answer to the question, what danger noodles are? You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> They probably currently are asking themselves, like, what the hell are they drawing? <laughs> what is this? And why? <laughs> a lot of weird lies. The, tru the truth is, we don't know either. So just bear with us. Yeah, you gave us really hard, hard prompts to draw. <laughs> but I really like to have a brain. Like, it's the worst when, you're, when you want to draw something, but you have no idea 
where to start or what to do. So like having somebody set a frame for you is for me personally, the yeah. best thing. Yes. Yes, that's true. Definitely it's always hard to the... come up with, with out of nothing. That's why it's much easier to like when I do uh, client work and stuff like that, you always have a briefing, you have a vision of what is going to be needed. And that's, that's yeah. much easier to come up with um, ideas yeah. and stuff like that. And when I try to draw for myself, it's really difficult. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think that's also like, um, like you draw a lot of everyday life, life stuff, like in a very charming way. But I think yeah. like that is the easiest because you, you know, you know how what to pick from. You have a certain yeah. amount of experiences and you're like, I can, I can draw from this. This is nice. Yes, it's That's why I used to draw lots of, uh, of my son because he was like filling my world and uh, yeah. he was always doing stupid stuff or funny stuff, which, we, which I could draw from. That was very inspirational. I mean, he still does it, but I kind of tuned it down because I feel like it's bordering on going into his privacy at some point, but yeah. it was good inspiration. <laughs> yeah, I get that. Yeah. It is kind of easy, that's true, but it's also something I like um, when other artists draw from their personal experiences or their personal lives because it's always I don't know it's interesting I like this everyday stuff and everyday thoughts that some people mm. have and it's good sharing some of them yeah I agree to that me too because you might think it's boring what you're having in your life but for other people it's not actually like Oh, and also other they, people like to that. see you experiencing the same boring and mundane stuff than they do. Like, yeah. Oh, I'm not alone thinking about this stuff. My life isn't boring. My life is super exciting. Oh, yeah. You have a very exciting life during Corona. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Being a freelancer from home. It's great. Lots of experiences. Like, oh, the other day a bird flew in my window. Oh, that's uh, it was really awesome. good. Is he well? Yeah. I don't know. It was a loud thump, and then I look and I saw like feathers in front of the window. Oh. <laughs> and you usually I... use a f leave a fatty mark on your window as well. I we had one yeah. fly into the same spot twice. <laughs> I don't know how you did that, but oh no, oh dumb bird. I mean, sorry bird, mm. but that yeah, was and, dumb. And our windows aren't even that clean. Uh, <laughs> Are you suggesting mine are? <laughs> maybe, maybe. I, mean, I was always saying like, oh, I don't have, I don't clean my windows because birds then don't fly in. <laughs> That's true because unclean windows have less reflection of the sky and the nature around it. <laughs> oh yeah. That's some why birds I... are still damp enough. <laughs> That's why I don't clean my windows. That's a good excuse, I think. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I research this excuse myself. I tell this to so my mom. Very accurate. <laughs> and nobody else cares. But moms care about dirty windows. <laughs> now um, my mom cares about the dirty fingernails of my son and also his dirty ears. And then I'm like, oh no, I'm such a slob. Oh good. That's not great. I think I selected something and I don't know if I unselected it, but I can't draw anymore. <laughs> Maybe you're, 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 you're you have a try control D. Yeah, no, that won't work. Do, mm. do you have the right color selected? Yep. Okay. Then I just uh, just take I'll just make one a new selection layer. tool and click somewhere outside of the canvas. Hello, I already did Jeff that. Joining us. Sometimes magma is just a little bit different to Photoshop, but not different enough so that you actually get used yeah. to the yeah. different <laughs> I figured it out. I don't know what I did, but it worked. Well, I didn't get the rhino in there yet. But... Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, I have nothing yet, so it's great. great <laughs> I have an idea, but it's still not... not... Not materializing somehow. Sorry, Irina, for encroaching on your canvas. 
short length. I, I don't think so. I, I just did, but then I sort of made it smaller. I wish I had pretty lines. This is making me cry. <laughs> it, looks, it, look, it looks still great. I mean, I know, I know what you mean. Like, all lines have no pressure sensitivity and yes. everything, but the overall shapes are really, they really look great. I think, I think it looks weird. really cool, actually. <laughs> Maybe you should do it more. Yeah. No, no. I don't want the creepy, to. the creepy rubber duck in the back. <laughs> what is it planning? <laughs> Maybe we should, you know, um, turn off our pressure sensitivity for. <laughs> so you feel a bit better. I don't know. I think the pressure sensitivity isn't actually the worst bit. It's when it's flagging. I think that's worse. Oh, the pressure sensitivity yeah. can be coped with. Um, yeah. yeah. But yeah. And I wouldn't wish I, that upon you. Yeah. <laughs> I had that too, but only when I worked in Chrome. And I thought somewhere in the help section of Magma Studio, they said that Edge would be the best version or the best browser to work with. So it helped with me, but obviously not. Yeah, no, it was even worse in Chrome. <laughs> Only my canvas. Oh, in, in, in Edge. Mm. I might try Firefox. Huh. Do I still have Firefox yeah. on here? But usually Firefox is pretty bad. Yes? Yeah. Huh. Huh. Like I was using <laughs> Firefox and switched to Chrome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good to know. Then I won't try that. Maybe there's a plugin you need or something like that. I think I read well, something about a plugin somewhere. Okay, but I mean, I, I had I've been working in Magma quite often, and it always works. Yeah. I don't know what's wrong today. Probably to have to restart the computer or something, and I don't want to do that yeah. because then I'll have to stop drawing. So, yeah, yeah, problem. Hmm. Okay. I created problems for myself here with overlaps that I don't like. Hmm. So, guys, what, what, what are you thinking? How is your character going along? What, what is your process? Because I'm, I'm confused here. What so, I was thinking, well, he's a curious guy. So he's, he's, his moss collections, which is he's like collecting. When he's done with accounting, which are, is like these, I, didn't, I wasn't sure if Vikings had pens leather stuff which they drew on i'm so not into <laughs> what vikings used to do so i thought okay he might have chiseled stuff on on tablets so he's accounting for the ships he's accounted for all the swords and he's accounted for all the shields and now he's done with his work and he can play with his moth collection and he's sort of curious about that but he's got the feeling that a duck is watching <laughs> <laughs> my character actually could be the son of yours because <laughs> He's also collecting moss. <laughs> and he has this great book, Moss Fun. <laughs> That's amazing. His, his, his rubber <laughs> diamond. The moss actually... fun book that he has found, right? Oh, wow. <laughs> and his, his rubber dino is keeping company and reading the books with him. And I don't know what you can do with moss, but probably examining it. Oh, my a God, lot I forgot the, di uh, the rhino. I Not the rhino, Volga. I forgot the rhino, too. But I oh. had also watching similar to Irina, but then I won't have room. Oh, okay, I can sort of push it slightly over to your side. We'll have the duck poke your rhino in the bum. My rubber dino is a dino which has got like a thing where you can blow him up. So I don't know why he does that and how he came into Viking land. Viking land. I, I'm thinking my my Viking accountant is actually working in a Viking accountant office with like cubicles, but they are a little bit like built together from random random wood panels. <laughs> Flanks. <laughs> that sounds yeah. legit. Yeah, I can see that. I am um, I'm not sure what I'm doing here. <laughs> No, I think like I have I have my Viking accountant who is, you know, just occasionally checking in on random places around them to see if there's any ducks waiting for them. 
So um, they always keep their moss and their rubber rhino clothes just to be safe. And um, uh, yeah, are checking up on the duck situation. But little did they know, the duck was right behind them. There's a duck behind <laughs> you. <laughs> and Jenny, what are you drawing? Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm basically work also tried the Viking accountant, which is really hard. <laughs> <laughs> so he's basically in his accountant office. I, I thought he is like a little fox, foxish dog to, to keep the ducks at bay. So that's a trained train fox repellent dog mm -hmm. <laughs> that he always like a, like a support dog. That's and clever. he's very anxious. So he has like the, the rubber rhino. It's like a stress toy. He has that in his hand, like <laughs> squeezing it while doing <laughs> I work. know, I was thinking of the same thing. <laughs> we have no, nice. no plan for this stress <laughs> rhino. <laughs> Yeah, because he's always anxious about the ducks. But yeah, his, his moss collection, like he had a little moss collection next to his abacus and like doing the books. Oh, abacus, or, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes, that would have been good. Huh. And like, if I'm if I'm getting to that part, like all his, his clothes, like they're all mended because he's very curious and he always gets into trouble and like rips everything. Like he has scars and like always dust like things that get in trouble because he's very curious. So <laughs> I'm going with subtle he subtle here. <laughs> I like that. The fear of ducks was really, really hard, I think, for me. Yeah. Like Sorry. In, in the beginning, I was like, oh yeah, that's fun. And then I was like, um how, how, show how should I portray that? Exactly. Oh, I don't have oh. I don't have that included yet. If I'm not making put... a death thing. A bottle of duck repellent on their belt. <laughs> yeah. Duck repellent. I was great. Yeah, I was thought, thinking about like a talisman with like duck feet, like dried duck feet, like yeah. done around oh. it with like some <laughs> rooms and stuff. Like, nice yeah, but, and disgusting. Uh, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Maybe something ducks would be afraid of, like vampires who are afraid of crosses or, or something like this but what are ducks afraid of actually <laughs> foxes. Fox. foxes foxes true mm. he could like have a fox, fox tail, tail or something yeah. hanging to his belt that's what i was thinking mm. you could have sort of give it a little tag duck repellent as well so something like that sort of anti-duck <laughs> tail oh that's why why are they <laughs> why are they afraid of foxes though very yeah, sensitive to them and eat them, but ducks you know, can fly. Yeah, yeah, but you get this picture of a fox carrying a duck, like holding him in his uh, his mouth. I think that's just you know because the colors it's go well fox together. propaganda. <laughs> it's fox propaganda, yeah. exactly. <laughs> it's very mean towards the poor, poor fox population. They actually don't like ducks. Yeah, they would sneer if you gave them a duck. It's like, duck, not for me. Yeah. I want a goose. <laughs> I want chicken. Mm -hmm. <sighs> There's my, my cat joint and is licking uh, <laughs> Mina region. Yeah. For all of you. Nice. Good job, cat. Good joining. Thank you <laughs> for that. Who is making dots oh, in no. my... Now, now, now she doesn't want to. Okay. Am I? The, oh, I'm sorry. It's like it's my face. <laughs> it's snowing on your pick. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Hmm. I've given I've given up on pretty. I'm sorry. <sighs> it's okay. That's not it's, why we are here for. Yeah. It's pretty, anyways. I don't think you can do not pretty. I think it works really well for you this time. Yeah, I like it. The, oh sure? my god, Shmu, what are you complaining about? It's amazing. Oh, thank you. That's what I wanted to hear. I was just <laughs> no, I really mean it. It looks really cool. I love that style. <laughs> like the, your lines are so crisp now. It's amazing. <laughs> this is what I did today. <laughs> So what was I doing? Oh yes, I gave wanted to give him long hair. 
I've been watching a lot my, of asterisks, I think. My Viking is spritzing his moss collection with some, some water, like as a plant mom, I know this feeling that you are constantly <laughs> moisturizing everything. Yes, naturally. That makes sense. <laughs> oh, he looks really cute. He's very intent on what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, he's curious. Yeah, that was I was that was the the thing which I was like, okay, what is he curious? I mean, I mean, obviously it's the curious about the moss thing, but it was hard also to visualize my fear of stuff. I was when I got that from my followers, I was like, oh, but how shall we draw this? Yeah, and it's I, I not their we, problem. <laughs> yes, totally not their problem. I'm very grateful for all the suggestions. <laughs> but yeah, because uh, you often like the fear of something is nearly the, the topic which you didn't have to sort of draw to make it visible so it's like yeah you know. yeah absolutely but i think we're doing great just sort of hinting at at his fears yes it's looking fantastic well thank you the mysterious voice from the off <laughs> <laughs> all right there were other people in here do you have <laughs> questions for us or something like that Mysterious okay. voice. Do we still continue rambling? Uh, thank you for throwing me under the bus. Uh, no, no, no questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No pressure. We yeah, we'll we'll keep an eye on the chat if there's something coming in. Also for you guys uh, watching this session, obviously, if you have questions, then post them in the YouTube chat and we will follow up on them. Yes, you can ask us anything. Yes. Is this an ask? Yeah. Now, we made it into it. Sorry. Oh, that's fun. So Are basically, initially, we came up with this because we <laughs> thought, okay, it would be fun to see what different things we come up with when we all get the same prompts, but how different it turns out. And I think that really is obvious here we're completely different in everything but then some things are reoccurring so i think that's really cool to see yes i agree i think it's interesting like that i think three of us are defaulting to men or male characters you don't know it yet for mine <laughs> i mean i'm in the center i see everything yes I still haven't decided. I decided for the shape, but it could still be. A... Now that you said that, I will probably make it a woman. All right. Challenge All accepted. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with men, but you no, know, I just found it interesting. I think it's because it's e easier to to draw a Viking when you draw a beard, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. But there are bearded women out there, so it's also a possibility. You can also draw Vikings without beards, like, you know, what? It, it yeah. is possible. Yeah. I know it's mind blowing. You're welcome. Well, you could probably draw um, um, without a beard, but the hat is obligatory. I oh, know you don't have a hat. No, nope. I have a hat. Okay. Did you know that that is actually historically very inaccurate? <laughs> <laughs> Vikings yeah, actually, did I think not like, have uh, horns on their helmets. Yeah, no, I think it actually came from this weird opera thing where they wore the hats, and now everybody yeah. thinks that the Vikings wore those hats. But on yeah. the other hand, they look so cool. They're just so they do. Like, yeah, I actually expected something like this, but since I have no, I don't nothing about I know nothing about Vikings at all, and I, yeah. I tried to no, do some fair. research, but. <laughs> The time was not enough. <laughs> but I, I think you're sure doing very well, Alina. Well, <laughs> no, so what I no. know about Vikings is that, like most like cool Viking shows, are portraying them in like in really nice dark colors, like dark browns and blacks for their clothing, and that that is also historically probably inaccurate because they probably preferred bright colors and patterns yeah. and stuff. Yeah. 
but but the moss obsession and the rubber rubber rhinos are very historically accurate i guess yeah yes. i'm pretty sure about that also you know, all viking the... accountants are a thing yeah. yep. like no doubt about that but yeah, don't I mean... put horns on your vikings yeah, <laughs> listen, listen to us yeah. <laughs> listen to science yeah, professionals <laughs> yes. no things but it's a kid so maybe he has just a, a helmet to play with it's not an actual maybe. viking helmet it's just something to like a costume yeah and nobody said that this was going to be an uh, like you know historically accurate viking or something they are all historically accurate what we're drawing <laughs> always historically always i mean i had to google how rhinos look like <laughs> because I, <laughs> I chose that i was like hmm hold on <laughs> I don't actually <laughs> know which ones are the rhinos. And now I'm, the... I, I was silly, thinking I of the hippo for like the whole yeah. morning today. Like, yeah, well. exactly. But the hippos are the ones without the, the nose thingy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Good talk. What's great about the horned hats is that you can put bills and receipts on them. <laughs> that is indeed amazing, yes. <laughs> Oh, wow. I think my accountant will have like a pinstripe um, like pants on, like leather Viking pants, but with pinstripes. Nice. That's very accountant -y. <laughs> Thank you. So we we <laughs> also know, uh, I think we know as much about accountants as we know about Vikings. <laughs> <laughs> or rhinos. Probably less. True story. <laughs> <laughs> we know a lot of people, just trust us. <laughs> <laughs> but not with our with, with your accounting. <laughs> I mean <laughs> get somebody in the comments an accountant and can correct our our accountant uh, misinformation. Uh, no, no comments so far on the accounting part, but we have <laughs> someone who pointed out that Vikings did actually have books and wrote with ink. So um, right. yeah, Perhaps. Irina, you're you're on track there. Okay, great. <laughs> I'm on the safe side now. <laughs> yeah, I didn't watch the Vikings uh, series. I, that's why I probably would have yes. known that if I'd watched it. Damn. I didn't well, watch it. I, I, I watched it. To be honest, there weren't many books in there. I saw a no. lot of half naked men, but yeah. not many books. Um, Very true. Yeah, I think the, the in the first season at least the only book that was featured was like. Uh, the ones from the Catholics or Protestants, whatever, from, from the Christians that they had yeah. writing. And I don't remember if they actually featured Viking writing. I but I, I, it's been a while that I watched it. It's been a while. <sighs> I and mean, we have uh, someone in the chat asking um, actually for a challenge to show your Wacoms that you're working on at the moment. Um, oh. I'm not sure if that is possible without wrecking the camera setup, but maybe you want to say what, what device right. you're working on. <laughs> I can move my camera too. Uh, yeah, I can just I lift see. my Wacom up. Uh, <laughs> I have this one. Yeah. This is a 16 inch. Oh, no. um, yeah. I got the same one, Irina. I think yes. I've already wrecked my setup, but yeah. <laughs> nice. I... Okay, end of the session. <laughs> I have this Cab one. Cable, oh. Cables unplugged, <laughs> displays flying on the ground. <laughs> now we all have no vacuum. <laughs> this Ooh. was dangerous. I, I, I think we successfully completed this challenge. Uh, whoever came up with this idea, thank you. Yay. <laughs> yeah, I think that that's, I've been asked this question from as well other people. And because um, there was like, oh, is, isn't it maybe too small? Because I think the 16 inch, I think that's actually something a lot of people are concerned about. Um, and I don't think it's too small at all because I love having some space on my desk. And I yes, think like that's too. really the perfect size for because I used to have a bigger bigger tablet and it was my desk is tiny so I was like oh and, and and it's not like you don't have uh, enough like room on the tablet I think that's totally fine as long as you've got a second monitor 
where you can also have references open and stuff, then you're good to go. Well, so my um, since since the whole home office situation, my boyfriend has his huge work Cintiq over here, which is like this. And I tried working on it a couple of times because I thought, yes, big Cintiq. But but in the end, I prefer working on my little fourteen inch Mobile Studio Pro because I don't know this big size is it's not comfortable for me to draw. I, I think that really depends on how you work. Yeah with your arm as well. If you'd like moving your arm in a big stride or if you do it less and then it can be annoying. Because I mean, it's basically, it's good to draw bigger strokes and everything. So that that is quite good, but yeah, it's not necessity. I, I'm, a, I'm a very tall and big person. So I'm very happy that I have the um, 24 inch as a Cintiq Pro, I think. And it's, it's so big and rest in peace, my desk space, but it's yeah I wouldn't I wouldn't change it for the world and I still like working on smaller on um, smaller what comes to but um this one's actually really perfect for me personally probably it's just a personal preference thing there is like yeah absolutely plus I like the fact with the smaller ones that I'm more flexible to decide on where I want to work from because um, since I'm working from home all the time, sometimes I want to work like on my desk or maybe in the kitchen, or I can even, I could even bring this to my boyfriend's home if I want to work there. And I think that's oh, because you've got a laptop. Don't you? Yes, I also have a laptop. Um, yeah, but I used to have a bigger Cintiq, in a, and if I had more space at home, I think I would still have it. But I just have one desk, and sometimes when I want to draw with like watercolor or something like this, I I need the space yeah, yeah. on the desk and just <laughs> re relocate everything. Good point. So I finally have a face on my Viking. Finally, Olga. Yeah, it took so. What have you time. been? What have you been doing all the time? <laughs> I was thinking about how I can implement all of this ideas <laughs> like the duck and the accounting and everything <laughs> yeah we created a mess <laughs> i love it so much chaos i'm here for it isn't that the topic though the whole creative I mean, chaos thing oh yes so that's that the, we, we the nailed that from the off just died <laughs> Yeah, probably everybody will just leave us and nobody will tell us and we will be continuing to draw until like tomorrow. For the evening session. Nobody tells us to stop. Yeah, I, I, I will silently sneak out of the session then for, for <laughs> to host another <laughs> session. But you, you just you just continue. I think we're, we're back at 6.30 anyway, so. <laughs> Hopefully I'll get my pen pressure working till then. <laughs> <laughs> um, even more important that. than pen pressure is stay hydrated. Oh, yes. I should have gotten myself something to drink. Forgot about that. So the person who brought up the the um, show your Wacom challenge is uh, is very happy with uh, with the result. Good, great. And uh, <laughs> the explanation about uh, the different preferences uh, in, mm -hmm. in sizes and surfaces. Yeah, because it is a big decision when you you have to make, and for it doesn't make. I think people eat, some people actually buy one and then send it back if they're just sort of to test it, and I think that's sort of. Uh, that's quite a big step and not really eco-friendly, but uh, yeah, but it is a big decision to, to sort of, to test some, which you'd like to test. Can one yeah. test back on somewhere? Is there like a possibility to do this? Uh, <laughs> yes, actually. So um, if, if you're somewhere in Germany near Düsseldorf uh, or in neighboring Belgium, Holland, Luxembourg, then we just opened our Wacom Experience Center here in Düsseldorf, which is basically, it's not a shop. So you don't have to buy, you cannot even buy anything here, uh, but we've got the entire range of Wacom products here, all wired up to Macs and PCs, and you can test and try for as long as you want. 
the coffee that we have down here is amazing. So that alone <laughs> is worth coming here. So. How is yeah, it from Belgium to drink the coffee? Drink the coffee. <laughs> No, it's it's a really it's a really cool and open creative space. It, it's more like a co-working situation, and we use this venue to um, to do workshops and meetings. Uh, we even have a little cinema, um, like real cinema chairs, where we can do uh, watch parties and uh, presentations and stuff. So, if you if you're anywhere near and you want to come see us and chat with Wacom, or um, as I said, just have a coffee or test our products, um, you're always welcome. Um, and for the rest, um, yes, we do have a couple of resellers that um, actually have our products um, installed, so you can can try them. Um, the big, big um, tech retailers, like the big chains, um, you will always find the Wacoms there, but they're usually just in boxes. Um, but if you go to the more specialized um, resellers, uh, then... Um, then you should be able to have the opportunity to actually try the products as well. That's pretty but yeah, cool. I mean, in the... a lot of events, right? Exactly. So basically, every Comic Con and manga event, you will <laughs> you will probably find us somewhere. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, in, in, it's it's just a question of of starting somewhere, right? So if you if you're coming from a from a small tablet, from an Intuos or something, then you have a, a rough idea of the size and dimension. And if you're more like a big brush Ooh. stroke person or more, you, know, you see it on the scratch mark of a tablet, whether you're always in the same corner <laughs> with your pen yeah. tip, because that's where you can see a little bit of wear. And then, then you me. can, <laughs> same here. And then you can <laughs> probably get an idea like, okay, do I want, do I want a 16 inch screen or go and do I go big? Yeah. I mean, it's always good to see everything. So if you've got the space, then it is cool. It's just very lot of money for something where you're just really sitting in one corner and not using all of it. So yeah, I think it's for me, why rich. I didn't like it, didn't like it in the end, because you have like when you have your program, you have all your menus on the corner. So I end up moving my arm like a lot from there to there oh, when yeah. I do like, menu stuff. And actually, my shoulders hurt after a day of working like this. So. Yeah. yeah. You I always think it's, nice. like, I it's the take the smaller ones because of that. <laughs> yeah, I always feel like it takes time to any kind of change in tablet for your back to adjust to it, yeah. <laughs> depending on like, yeah. like, okay, this is new. Now I will sort of start twinging. I think actually my back is best when I work on an into or it's just like a flat. Uh, tablet I don't know I but then I keep my head up looking at the monitor and not looking down so I should basically switch that from time to time I have this uh this ergo stand for the Cintiq so I can put it actually up That's in an so angle good. Oh, and cool. I I really need that because yeah your back will like hate you otherwise if you stay in but the if same you're... position for that but if it's like up do you sort of rest your arm on it so doesn't the arm get tired of going up like that as well a bit? I treat it as my daily workout session and <laughs> um, just, you know, <laughs> embrace the pain. Okay, <laughs> good. Good for you. <laughs> it's actually okay, I see. Like, because I am constantly moving around, especially, using yes. it, especially when I'm, like, painting something. So not when I'm, like, drawing like this, I need a lot of control, but when I'm painting... I like to work like with my whole arm actually. So I keep moving so it doesn't really strain me too much, I think. Yeah, I think the changing around is the best thing because I got like a standing desk as well. So that's sort of my workout. And weirdly enough, I'm standing on one leg a lot. <laughs> I don't know if any other people do that, but I was like, okay, I'm standing on one leg doing yoga poses. Yes, <laughs> the tree. Exactly. Yeah, I always do this too. Whenever I stand in the kitchen, I'm standing wow. like the tree. <laughs> Maybe we've got flamingo relatives. Hmm. 
putting up some some duck warning signs. <laughs> yes, I have one too. Ducks are not allowed. That's why my kid has a rubber rhino and not a rubber duck. Oh, maybe it's the warning sign of the rhino. I don't know. Oh, wow. That's why my like duck ducks. snuck up behind the sign. <laughs> It makes a lot of sense now. Everything makes sense. This rubber rhino instead of a duck. I love your drawings. All look so great. Yes. Me too. The fox is it's cute. So Jenny's fox is also so, so cute. cute. <laughs> yeah. I like the dead duck next to it. It's very good. Killer. And the duck on Vera's drawing is also <laughs> well, like a goose, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. I it's mean. That. It's a mean duck. <laughs> it has a bit too long like uh, neck, but it's it's gonna get it fixed. <laughs> I think I got like uh, I got a bit obsessed with moose keys lately because I got influenced by some Instagram commercial to buy like clothing that had keys on it that were wearing hats and little bow ties. Oh, so, that's oddly <laughs> specific. Geese are on my mind, <laughs> but it will be a duck. The question is now: Did you buy it? I did. I did buy it. <laughs> They were sweatpants and they were super cozy and amazing looking and but they came from Asia so um, I don't know what kind of devil brought me there but um, of course the sizes were off <laughs> um, but it was weird because usually they are just <clears throat> too small in general um, but in this case they were fitting very well around the waist and the upper size but they just ended mid shin for me. So mm. they're like chino, chino, uh, chino pants for me. <laughs> yeah. You could sew more material onto the bottom. But I want, no, no, I need geese on them and that would kind of ruin them for me. So. You could buy another material with geese, just different geese. <laughs> different geese. <laughs> yeah. I think <laughs> I will find somebody who will appreciate them as they are and. Um, rest my life without these pants. <sighs> it's okay. You don't have to be sad on my behalf. We've got questions. Yay! Yay! A couple of questions, actually. Um, okay, let's take them one by one. Um, people are asking what your actual profession is because they are thinking, are you actually being a professional artist and doing that full time and live of it, or if it is just for fun on a very cool and high end level. <laughs> do, do they mean that, that you seeing our pictures, they can't believe that we are doing it for <laughs> 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 maybe they're, they're probably thinking that you could easily do a TV or like Twitch or live stream or whatever, like <laughs> make your money of it. Yes. Yeah. The question. Yes. Right. The yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The answer is yes. In the house. Paying us yes. <laughs> I think all of us are freelance illustrators for quite mm -hmm. a while now. Um, at least for me, I'm like for about eight or nine years now freelancing full time. Wow. And Damn, yes, it's a long time. Right. <laughs> right after I moved time. to Hamburg, I started freelancing. <laughs> And I mostly do like cute illustrations for books, for sometimes video games, advertising, anything that, that comes to me and yeah, stuff like this. Yeah. Damn, that's a long time. Yes, <laughs> it feels like a long time too. <laughs> what was the hardest bit for you? Just sort of, sort of like uh, as a freelancer? How get started? Or getting, yeah, oh, how, getting how started. I think that's always most interesting to everybody. Actually, sometimes bookkeeping, it took a while until I could afford an accountant. Yeah. <laughs> and this was something that, that kept me awake in this time of year when you had to do your taxes and stuff like this. And I didn't in want to make any mistake. What? 
I hated May. I always hated yes, May because May, was, May was the month worst year. month, and actually, it's the best month. I think. <laughs> Yes, because the weather finally starts to get good and you're just sitting at home doing your taxes. <laughs> and you like well, for me, it's actually I'm not doing my taxes. I'm 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 just procrastinating about doing my taxes because I hate <laughs> them and I'm feeling really bad because of that. So I'm yes. not getting them done and also not enjoying myself. <laughs> it's the best but, but since I have an accountant for that, it's much easier. But the, I don't know what was hard was like getting started and get the right jobs and get enough jobs and know you have to pay your rent and your everything at the end of the month and um, just to to get from month to month. But that's quite some time ago that I felt like this and I'm just so grateful and happy that it all worked out and that I had the opportunity to yeah just find my way through this job jungle. I think the internet helps a lot with this. Yeah. Because when I started out, it, it it doesn't feel like but like 10 years ago there, there wasn't as much information on the internet about being a freelance illustrator as there is now and it's a lot easier to get answers for all the questions you have on that um, so that helps a lot um, yeah but those were the the hardest parts I think my viking lady has a beard now by the way I love it <laughs> a little bit of a beard <laughs> And, and the other question is actually, um, uh, if you only do 2D art or whether you also do 3D. I, I think most of us only just 2D, don't we? Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Some, I have maybe dabbled. 3D a couple of times and it's kind of fascinating, but I also don't have the patience. Like when you draw something and when, when you work in 2D, it's much quicker to get a result. And when you work in 3D, it takes a much longer time until you have something that looks good then of course you have more options with that that actually save you time because you can if you have a character ready you can pose it and everything it's a little bit faster than redrawing every single pose but just this initial initial long part of getting it done is kind of off-putting for me i agree yeah i do um i think you can be everything's time consuming and and 3D is really time consuming as well, like sort of setting stuff up and just sort of getting really good at something. So I always felt like I had to decide on one way or the other what I want to do. And I was just always more interested in sort of drawing, even though the 3D thing is cool. But I mean, I, I wouldn't mind uh, to also do sculpting and other stuff and uh, sewing or something. But I was like, okay, I, don't have to, I love this stuff, but I don't have the time to really get good at it. So I'm like, Okay, I think I have to draw. <laughs> I think that's also another part when you already feel like you're good at something. And for us, I think it's like drawing and painting. Then starting from like zero in another field is super intimidating and hard because you like you're struggling a lot and you have to kind of yeah get to terms with that. <laughs> that you have to put the work in before you're good at it. Did I say something dumb? Do you not agree? <laughs> it's like no, no, awkward no. silence. <laughs> of Vera we can draw. Agree. I think oh it's why should we let want her to join? She's just doing weird things. <laughs> it's, it's weird. I think it's also a little bit of a danger that once you know that you're good at something, you're really afraid to try different things that you're not yeah. that good at because you're used to getting good results out of things you start right so it's really yeah, yeah. scary to do something that <laughs> that will not yeah. produce a good result so it's a, it's a little bit of a, a professional fear i guess that especially yeah. as an artist you feel like every art thing that you touch has to become great otherwise mm -hmm. you fail as an artist at least for me it's really hard to sometimes convince myself to try something to that i'm not good at and maybe never show it to anyone, just just do it for myself, to try it mm -hmm. and to fail and to learn something from it. And, yeah, but I for agree. some reason, I always think that whatever I start, it has to produce a, like a postable and a good result that I can show to other people. Mm -hmm. And it's a bit I limiting. Has a lot of, to do with 
like comfort zone versus non-comfort zone i mean like not only maybe trying out other stuff but just and drawing in general i mean you you don't want to stand still but you don't want to um to sort of lose yourself in a a far too complicated drawing when you're not right when the time isn't right so i always think okay just have like 10 percent new stuff maybe when you start drawing uh, when you do a new drawing and then you still it's fun because you're still learning while you're drawing but you're not like completely overwhelmed with okay what is the colors what is the so if you're like not good at color yet then you say okay i'll do start with black and white drawings and get good at that and then i'll try mm -hmm. try color just sort of i think that's something which people often get overwhelmed with but oh i want to do this great portraits and um, like a complete uh 20 character drawings and then they sort of fail at that and think oh i'm a bad artist but then uh, it's natural to to sort of have to take these steps one at a time and mm -hmm. uh and i think you get better faster when you don't overwhelm yourself too fast but that you sort of say okay and in this drawing i would like to try out this thing yeah i think that works well for me anyway yeah We've got uh, another business-related question. Um, so what are your typical requests for illustrations? Is it more book illustrations, posters, etc.? cetera? Um, what kind of commissions do you do most, basically? I, think I often get book stuff. Um, sort of people saying, oh, I've, I've sort of, I've drawn, I've written a story. I wouldn't mind having somebody draw books. But then again, those are also often people who don't really want to pay. <laughs> <laughs> so um but i do get a lot of those all like commissions of can you draw my dog <laughs> and those are also um the stuff which you don't then really do because i mean it, it's usually private illustrations which don't match the time you can put in and ask the, the money for because people wouldn't maybe want to to spend that amount of money because i mean you have to get on get your fees in but i think it also depends on what your kind of drawings are so if it's very illustrative then people come with, to you with more illustrative drawings and it also depends on if you what you present to the outside then that's what people will come for really so um yeah that's what i, I sort of think about that. yeah for me it's really really diverse probably because just i do a lot of different stuff so i get uh, my jobs are some are character design, some are illustrations, and some are storyboards for like commercials and animated movies. So, and I like it this way. I, I prefer it to be like kind of different, my, my job. So it doesn't feel the same all the time. And I always have like some sort of variety. But on the other hand, it also means that I like, I don't use a specific software I use for storyboards for like months because I have been doing other jobs in between. And then every time I have to remember, oh, how did this work again? Because you are like, <laughs> out of your muscle memory because I don't use the same software all the time or like the same workflow. So it's all also a little bit challenging, but but I like this kind of challenge. I like that too. And then like, I've have had I've more currently having a having like costume designs which I'm doing for for computer games which is like complete training completely different art muscles for me than my usual stuff or when when it's like storyboarding stuff I, that, that's that's something which I do get as well I was just a little thinking about what's the most thing would you like it opening the mails oh can you draw this and this so, I mean those aren't the jobs that uh, really our jobs in the end they're very different and i think that that's great as well because it's just that's why you're not really working in a company isn't it because that's like the good thing yeah. about it that you can get anything yeah i agree for me it's also a lot of um illustration for books and publishing in general but i'm a baby i just started in 2019 and i've been doing book illustrations a lot i've been doing some stuff for uh, games and you know marketing as well but yeah I'm thinking it's like a it's a very it's a very mixed market that we are working in as illustrators so it's interesting to see kind of what everybody's mostly doing and where these things are coming from right yes that's true yeah 
Yeah, for me, because I'm, I'm working very much less hours because I have two small children and I don't have a lot of time. I'm taking a lot of jobs that are smaller. Like I did like design like the CI for a podcast and like did like little illustrations for every episode or like did t-shirt designs and stuff like that. Like I, I do a lot of these jobs actually. <laughs> Like that. Yeah, because I mean, you've got time is a limited resource. I exactly. Yeah. It's nice to yeah. have sort of something small you can put drop somewhere yeah. in between. Exactly, and it's kind of low pressure, and it's kind of just like comfortable. Like it's another approach. Like I have the feeling that a lot of people who are starting into the industry is that they're really taking off on everything, mm -hmm. and 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 get a bit overwhelmed. Like that is often something yeah. like I when I talk to people at TH mostly like that is something I I kind of. Like have the feeling at least. Like I don't know if yeah. you agree with that, but like, no, like you kind of have the feeling you have to take everything. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, but this is also like when when we had the question, what do you find hardest in freelancing? Like the accounting thing, of course. But I <laughs> think like one of my biggest problems was also finding this balance between well, like what jobs to take and when to take breaks I because know. you have. I'm also not. I'm. I've been a full time freelancer for two years now. Before that, I was only like I was working in a company and freelancing and now I'm full-time freelancer so I'm not that experienced in like being completely dependent on freelancing so sometimes I have this fear that right now I have job offers but if I don't take them I don't know when the next ones will come and sometimes I just yeah. take on too much and then I'm super stressed and I don't yeah. like some of those jobs even and that is I think like the, the thing that I'm mostly struggling to learn right now to actually like find uh, the the knowledge and the ba balance and knowing when to say no to a job offer and not to take on all of them and then half die trying to do them actually. Yeah. I yes. think what helped me with that was to to sort of take a step back and say, okay, what would happen if you don't have a month or two where there's no jobs? And then it was like, ooh, I would have time to do this and this and this and this. And because I'm kind of sometimes waiting for there not to be any jobs so I can maybe sort of do a shop, have some prints going. I mean, and those are just small things. But once you get those running, you can have like a steady, also little income on the side when you get it up and running. And it is like yeah. a, or, or you can just sort of open the shop for just like, okay, saying, okay, I've got a month. So I'll prepare everything, have open the shop for two weeks if you don't want to have it constantly. So you'd like have, seasons where you open the shop when you just don't have anything and then you can say okay I'm committing to this full time and you don't have to do it next to the other stuff because every artist like likes having shops with selling their art and post cards and their little art books but then again nobody really has the time to sell them and then you like mm -hmm. do them and you're completely overwhelmed with what did I, I do with this how should I uh manage and then you sort of, I said I sometimes just print books and then don't sell them which is stupid but I like <laughs> having <laughs> that's true and also they, you will sell them all <laughs> but I think the pro biggest problem is actually shipping like packing up everything yes. and shipping the right things to the right people and then also checking up on those especially for international shipping things they sometimes get lost why I think that it's good to do that like in concentrated two weeks or something get it over and done with and not have this yeah. constant problem over and over again and have the same steps sort of where you have to think about oh, okay what do I have to do now so like okay that's like that's why I, that's what I'm waiting for when I don't have any jobs so that's that sort of gives me peace of mind and I think it's good to have something like little something like that where you say okay if I don't have any jobs I will tackle this on my personal work and see where that goes Yes, it's also good to have something to work on that's not dependent on clients or something because you never know when they change their mind or when they don't need you as an illustrator anymore. They don't come back to you with new projects. And when you have another project like for yourself and the only person um, who is working on it, is, on it is you, then you can always push that yeah. into those times when you don't have any other income or something like that. 
So I guess my problem is I have my own projects, but some uh, and then I'm like, okay, I have this month off and I will only work on my own project. And then some email arrives like, oh, we need an urgent illustration for this. And then, and then I say yes, because I can't say <laughs> no. Apparently my problem is saying no. And then my planned month of doing my own project is, is ruined again. So yeah, that's, I guess, I guess that's my issue. I mean, in, in the end, you've got to be your own HR department, right? And like, yeah. Yeah. Keep an eye on like, did you take all your vacation days this year? <laughs> yeah. You have to take your vacation now. That's the sort of email well, that I get job. from my day job. <laughs> it's the marketing yeah, and accounting department. and legal and marketing. Exactly. And you never sort of calculate time for that. Oh, I often forget it. Like, okay, social media is like just such a huge part and you either get fed up with it or you sort of yeah I don't know I feel like I'm sort of viewing social media a bit like a job as well and I try to make time for that too because otherwise I get overwhelmed by that as well and that kind of works for me so I think okay I'm sort of dependent on social media it's fun to interact with people but it's also just it's, it's also part of a job really because yes. yeah, that's, that's true. Wh where everything all for me a lot of jobs come from from mm -hmm. from like my my media presence but that's that also depends. That's not like for every artist. I mean, if you go on conventions or, or stuff like that, I think job opportunities arise in very many forms. But uh, that's like my thing where I chose to lay my eggs in with that basket. <laughs> well said. Yeah, we came back to ducks. How did it? <laughs> <laughs> that 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 you laid in the basket. <laughs> okay, then now I'm going to include eggs where he, which he hid of baby ducks, which there will be surprise ducks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> By the way, Jenny, I just looked at at, uh, at yours, and I love the the horn with the coffee. I'm assuming it is coffee, right? Yeah, it's coffee. Of course. <laughs> it's coffee. <laughs> That's cute. This is how how a Viking would work in an office. Yeah. Environment. <laughs> Oh, coffee is a good keyword. We we are one hour and five minutes into the live drawing session with you guys. Um, oh, wow. So if you want to go on, go on. Uh, I, I will need a coffee sooner or later at some point. Yeah. <laughs> same, same. Yeah, yeah um, I think this won't get any better. I think this looks amazing. Really, I think it actually looks good. So, like, I think we, we, we yes. came to a good point. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. I see Vikings, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and, and rubber, r rubber rhinos, yeah. And ducks. Mm -hmm. I forgot the rubber rhino. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> the most essential part, Schmier. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. He's taking a bath. Yeah, because I started going... drawing him and it was a dino, not a rhino. And I was like, confused <laughs> and I stopped. Ah, same same thing. They are pretty similar. <laughs> same thing next day. <laughs> so so is, this, is this going to be the first page of a new book called Where is, Where's Rhino? <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Beware of, beware of that. Um, maybe. If you're joining in just now, for the people, there's a... So there's a rhino in every image, but some are more easy to find than others. So where where are we? <laughs> okay, I'll add a rhino. I'll add a rhino. <laughs> <laughs> Peer pressure. Yay. Uh, no, no pressure. Ah, that's fine. I've got him. Vera, is your rhino sleeping on this moss? Yes. That, this that is so cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Looks so cozy. <laughs> oh, yes, it's really cute. <laughs> oh, I love everybody's drawing. This is so cool. <laughs> All right. I think with that last rhino, we can probably say mission accomplished, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. <laughs> Sorry for the background noise. We're the we're in between talks here in the experience center, so there's <laughs> people running around. Um, we have one more question, and that might be pretty interesting one. 
and because I already know the answer, it's like, do you ever do group drawings like this or similar in your free time? Or maybe on when? Sundays, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we actually, well, actually used to meet up every Sunday um, before COVID in person, like in a cafe and do it together. But that changed a bit due to the situation. So we haven't seen each other in quite some time. But sometimes we have already met in Magma and drawn together. Yeah. Yep. And it was fun. So it's and fair to say tonight, to... Yeah. Oh, exactly. And then it's fair to say <laughs> to, to, to look you up on, on Instagram to see... Uh, obviously the art, but also all the other yes. activities and stuff that you do and <laughs> what to meet you and if there is maybe a public drawing session with you at some time in the future. Of course, we, we can add our Instagram handles. I think we did this the last time too, oh, if you yeah. want. Yeah. We can just put it under our drawings, I think. I think free joining sessions with us, that might be something which is a bit tricky. We have because then there's like the limit of people. Um, I don't, we haven't done that yet people could join but maybe we will do something in the in the like that in the uh, future like saying yeah. like have a lottery or something <laughs> i also have like i really like this this idea of uh, suggesting characters by the followers so we might yeah. continue yeah. doing that yeah, <laughs> maybe like we will do that well. with you nice. guys what do you think ah. <laughs> yeah I like the idea. Well, we're, we're definitely <laughs> going to see each other again in when? Uh, 6.30 German time. So in, what is that? Three, three and a half hours um, for the next session, which we're going to call Global Canvas, uh, where we have you again. Uh, but what we also will have uh, various students who are going to participate live here from the Wacom Experience Center again in Magma Studio. So uh, maybe that's already a step into an open public collaboration. I'm, I'm very, very curious what's <laughs> going to happen there. So yeah, we are also very curious. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, looking forward to it. Same here. Thank you so much. Thank you for the session so far. The art looks amazing. I really, really, really like what, what, what came of it. Uh, thank you, everybody who's um, following us on YouTube in the Connected Ink sessions. Uh, as I said, we will be back, and there's heaps of more crazy, creative, fun, entertaining, educational sessions at Connected Ink. So stay tuned and join us later. Thank you very much. And let me switch my camera on again. <laughs> for the goodbyes <laughs> Bye -bye. because that is the cue for the Japanese team back in Tokyo to switch over to the next <laughs> channel <laughs> it's all on Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. 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 Now we have to wait until the boilerplate is up and running yeah, we will be co <laughs> continue waving yes. oh, no, we have to wave. see you then